Hey, welcome back guys. So in a previous video, we went ahead and started automating the Amazon website using WebDriver IO. So we did our basic project setup as well as we wrote our first test. Now in this video, we're going to go ahead and start adding some additional test. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm back here on the Amazon website. Now let's imagine your interviewer now asks you to automate the search functionality. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you can ask the person like, hey, what do you want me to automate over here? So that means you can probably walk through the flow. It's like, all right, I'll probably, let's say, type something in here. Maybe I'm going to type in MacBook. Let's add that in. And now here I have an option to simply click on the search icon. I can tap enter or basically hit enter. That way I will also do the search. I can select an item from the list and I can search from there as well. Assuming he said, just go with the basic flow, simply type something in here click on the search button and then you're going to go through your next screen which is going to be right here and here you simply have to verify that this particular part which says one out of 16 results for macbook matches based on what you search so that's going to be your entire flow but the idea behind this flow is that the interviewer is trying to figure out whether you know how to add text into an input field whether you know how to click on an uh, or whether you know how to find an element how to click on a particular element and then how to verify the text as part of the assertion. So these are some of the different things that we're going to be covering as part of this test that we will be writing. So a few different things we're going to be covering here, different web driver IO commands and really common things that you're going to be doing on a day to day web automation. So let's go ahead and get started. Now here we'll do right click. Now this is going to be one of the main things as part of any of these interviews. One of the key things they're trying to figure out is do you really know how to find elements or whether you can find elements through the dev tools. So this is where your skills will really shine if you are really good with finding elements in the DOM. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click on this arrow right here. I will hover over to this and you can see that we have an input type equals text with ID equals to tap search text box. So if you have an ID here, guys, obviously just go with that. That's the easiest way to go for. So simply just copy the ID, paste it here and then add in an hash there or basically the pound sign. And it's going to tell you that we have one out of one node. That means this is a unique node. And they might even ask you, to be honest, what do you mean if there's like one node or multiple nodes? How exactly you would change your test automation strategy? And we will get to that later on. But for now, you will say, hey, this is unique. So I'm going to go with that. So I'll copy this. And I'm going to head back to VS Code. Now I will add in my new test here. So let's call this one. Search, content, and verify text. Same thing, we'll keep it in a sync block. And then I can just do await dollar and then just add this in here. Now let me just explain what I did. Well, first of all, the dollar is the way for us to go ahead and find a WebDriver IO element. So anytime you do a dollar, you add in your selector, you can add in different kinds of selector that WebDriver IO provides. In our case, we're going with the CSS selector as one of our strategy. So I've said, all right, now go ahead and find this and this will return a WebDriver IO element which will allow me to do different things on it, such as add in the text, click on it, interact with it, do whatever I want to do with that particular WebDriver IO element. Now, same thing as before, we can import this on the top as well. So I'm just going to comma dollar. And now if I hover over to this, you're going to notice it's saying this is a WebDriver IO element, WebDriver IO dot element. So that's good. Now, what we want to do is add some text. So to add the text, we can use the add value command. And the moment I started typing, you can see it did all of the um, auto completion for me so it's telling me hey these are all the different values this is nice right because now you don't have to look at the documentation the documentation is right here in your vs code this is kind of the smart things you can do in fact if you want to take it one level up use typescript that they will even tell you if you make some mistake or you write something wrong but in our case we'll go with javascript i will add an add value and then this i need to fix this because it added additional Parenthesis here. All right, add value. And what do we want to add in here? So we are searching for MacBook. So I'll just add that here over there. All right, so this will go ahead, find my element or that search text box. Then it's going to add in a text called MacBook there. Now, once I've done that, I need to go ahead and click on that button. So let's find that button and then do a click on that button. And then finally, we will add in our assertion. So heading back to my Chrome. So this is my button. We already know. We can simply hover over to that. And then this way, as this one, again, we have an ID with nav search submit button. But let's assume this doesn't have an ID, then what do we go for? So maybe we can go for input type submit. I'm not sure if this is going to be unique, but let's try it out. Yeah, this is unique. So that's nice, right? So we can just do input type as submit. 
So it could also be possible, guys, that when you're automating this, even though there is an ID, they might be like, hey, don't use the ID, use something else, right? Because if ID is there, it's easy. And ideally, that's what you would want to do. Like if your websites have IDs, just keep using them. They are unique. But again, they, there is going to be scenarios where the developers won't even add in the ID. So you have to figure out different ways to pick this up. Now, in this case, I said, let's go with the type submit, which is what I added. I also added an input there to make it even more unique. That should be an input with a type submit. Again, we got one out of one node there, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. So let's copy this and head back. And now I'll just do await, same thing as before. And then I can just do this time click because we're going to be clicking on that search button. And right here, there you go, perfect. And let's just fix this parentheses again because this just keeps coming up as part of VS code. All right, nice. Now the final thing we need to do is verify our text. So for that, we need to find that text and then we need to see what is the element for that. And then we'll add in our session to verify that the text contains, uh, let's say MacBook or it should match exactly as MacBook. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll head back to Chrome. We'll search for MacBook here again. The text we need to go for is this one. So I'll hover over that. And you can see it already has a span class of a color state, a text bold. So maybe we can just copy the whole thing. And the moment I did that, you can see I'm getting a unique node. But one thing you need to remember is this is a class. So either you can just wrap it in a class here like this, or you can simply add in a dot here and then add in a dot here as well. So this is the, again, one way to go ahead and find that element. So I just did that. And now I'm gonna copy this, head back right over here. And then we'll just do await dollar. And then here I will just say, expect this to have text. Now here, if you guys don't know how to do this, like how to verify the text, I pause the video here, go to the documentation and take a look at how you can verify the element has a text and it should match to the expected text that you want. So this is like a little exercise. So pause the video right now. Go ahead, try to figure out how you can find this assertion on your own, where you can verify that the text contains MacBook. Once you're done, come back and then we'll verify our flow. All right, so how was that exercise? Were you guys able to figure it out? So let's head over to the documentation to see if I don't really know what is that right assertion, how would I find it? So I'm gonna go to Chrome. I'm gonna search for WebDriver IO here. Now right here in my search box, I will search for expect assertions because that's what we're using. And we can go right there. And within expect, you can see we have all of these different assertions right over here. So if I simply just scroll down, we're gonna look for something with text. So maybe we can just do a quick search. I'll just search for text here. And there you go. So we found it on the right to have text or to have text containing. So I think we wanna match the exact text because if I go back here, MacBook is the exact text. So we'll just verify the same text here and I can just do to have text. But one thing to realize is this one is actually within quotes versus the one we search for is not within the quotes. So maybe something like to have text containing is good enough because we, it's not an exact match, but it's close enough. So let's use that. Now here I can just do wrap this into an expect assertion. Now I can just do to have instead of title containing, I will say text containing. And now here I can simply add in MacBook. Perfect. So that's my overall test. Let's try to run this to make sure this works. So we'll do the same thing, npxwdau. And this will go ahead and run both the tests together, which is fine, they're independent, so it should work fine. There you go, just did a search for MacBook. And look at that, my test successfully passed, perfect. Again, you can try to fail your assertion to make sure it's actually working, but let's just assume this works and you're good to go. Now, one little optimization we can do over here is instead of adding all of these elements right here, we can create a variable for them, which is a little bit more readable. So I can call this one, let's say a search input, and then just add this entire thing there like this. I can add another one, call this one, let's say search button. And then just put this whole thing over here. And finally, I can just do, what is this expected search? Expected search text. And then we can copy this thing. So let's just copy this and do the same thing, await and paste it right here. 
So this way now I can go ahead and keep replacing these items, replace this one with my search input, replace this with search button and then finally replace this as well with expected search text. Now I know the code is actually longer. We have added three more lines, but the advantage you get with that, or they can probably, you can tell to the interviewer is that, hey, now that I've separated my selectors out, I can copy this, reuse it in other places as well, make it in a global, put it in my page object. There's different ways you can now take this existing selectors that you have added in and put it in its own file so that you can reuse it in multiple places. And then this part right here is a lot more readable compared to adding all of those selectors over here. All right, let's just quickly run this again to make sure it's still working and we haven't really broken anything. All right, we're searching for MacBook. And there you go, my test successfully passed this time again. So to quickly summarize this video, we verified how we can go ahead and search for an element. This is one of the huge thing. We looked into searching by ID. Then let's say the interview threw us a curveball and said, hey, this time don't work with ID, use with something else. So we created our custom CSS selector, which is this input type submit. And after that, we went in with the regular classic CSS selectors where we just simply mixed two classes together and then we added that as part of our search text. Now, this is extremely important if you know how to work with DOM, be able to quickly search through the DOM and create your own custom selectors. It will really help you in your interviews as well as also when you're doing your test automation as well. And finally, we looked into different methods such as add value, click to have text containing and looked at how we can refer to the documentation as well. That's it for now, guys. I will see you in the next one.